I did think well, yesterday were pretty beneficial. Though. Oh, goodness Very gracious. Awesome. I've been to a bunch of those. That's Same the best one. one. Really? Same old stuff? Some of them getting pretty good. Uh, I'm lofty. Okay. This one is something that we're talking about stuff that we could eat. Sure. Relative to what it was in 1980. Uh, to my daughter in right town. It's right very next to Carmel, Indiana. Oh, really? <laughs> she said that mayor is known as the Roundabout kind of like King. The numbers were just amazing. It's 147 roundabouts and 12 traffic lights in a town of 100 and 107,000 people. That's a big town. Yeah. Well, here comes. We got our, our dentist contingent. Here comes the second. Good morning, sir. How are you? Pretty good. Making all, making all your patients happy. Trying to. <coughs> you guys on Friday night? Well, no, I'm heading for Baltimore tomorrow. So I'm well, what are you? <laughs> Old men are do weird things. I, I collect model trains, yeah. antiques, yeah. and they have this international train show in a little place called York, Pennsylvania. There you go. How long are we going for? Be back Saturday. I got gotcha. you. We're going Friday night to we'll listen to Vanessa Williams sing with the symphony, I guess. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, we would be there if it, uh, if it weren't for this. Jane going to? Not with me, no, but she didn't want to go by herself. So. I got you. Maybe she should go with Catherine. Catherine Williams. 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 Catherine Brisket and vegetable medley. Catch him after we're done. What's going on? You're just living a little bit about Boca. How about you? So that, you somebody good? told me you're part of the map, do you? Andy, you want to sit closer to here? You can almost see the. Yeah. 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 Jackie. Yes, I have. Jackie and Helen are my grandparents. How about that? Yeah. That? Michael's my dad. I don't know who their kids are. No. This is usually where yeah. Andy sits. No, that's so my grandparents. Of, uh, we had Hayes's and Mosses. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There a lot of folks. Can I ask people? There was the Even when I was growing up. Well, we drive through now. My kids think I'm telling grandpa stories. I'm like, that wasn't here. That wasn't here. That wasn't here. I, didn't I said in Providence was a farm, believe it or not. So, well, that's Johnny come lately. That's oh, yeah, 15 or 20 yeah. years old. Yep. Yeah. I grew up, my parents' house is about a couple hundred yards from Lakeview Elementary on Songford Road. There, in my time, Willoughby Station was a yep. dairy farm, yeah, now, Langford Cove was a dairy farm. Jesus. Did you know Mr. Pe Mr. Earl Pierce? Oh yeah. So where his house sat, it's on the corner down. It was the only house at the time. Oh, well, that's my parents' house. Okay. Yeah. We actually bought an old old tractor from Mr. Pierce way back when. It was, should have been classified as an antique. It was a piece of work. That old house. Yep. When I was a kid, of course, you got to think about this for a kid. I thought it was like a, an old haunted house you could see in a movie. It was the old ricketyest thing you ever been in. Oh, yeah. When he got older, my dad would help him. Water the cows. But, you know, I go up there with him a lot. Yep. Mr. Roberts. Was that me? I don't mean. Mm -hmm. Roberts rules. Got a younger home. brother and sister. Yeah, if he can go to Mount Sweet Chamber of Commerce, he can come out here and do some training. Because that would be great. You know, we can do the 
I tried to get along with the organization. I think there's two that do the certification of Robert Schultz. Mr. Adrian, yeah. they yeah. got at least yeah. like a case and take it home. Yeah. You yeah. certify you yeah. at least take it for yeah. 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 go through the process. Yeah. 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 Can you handle that? Yeah. 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 Apparently, it's like going through a technical bar exam. Every time I ask you about real estate, you tell me you need one more, more sale. That's right. One <laughs> more short. You help me. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk about it after this meeting. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is getting toward the end of the month. So, you know, we'll get it close. We got to make it happen quick. We don't get to be this age. <laughs> okay. It's 11 o'clock. You guys ready? ready to go? All right, let us proceed. All right, a um, few things I want to say before we get started. One is to remind everybody that um, next month's uh, schedule is is uh, different than, than normal. So I think the seventh is the preliminary, and the fourteenth. Um, the fourteenth is the the, um, the the voting meeting which will wow. be on Monday, mm -hmm. and uh, that's to avoid Thanksgiving. So I just want everybody to to remember that. We'll probably be looking at the calendar for next year uh, at that time. We do have a few items. Um, when the staff report went out, uh, we were going to have a discussion on the 109 apartments. The applicant has said he doesn't, he's not, in, he's not planning to consider being on this agenda, so we don't need to consider Where it. are those? Uh, it's a very, very end, very last thing on, page, on the agenda, uh, number three. We were just going to talk about a request oh, all right. for them to be on, but they have said they don't want it, so we're okay with that. Sure. And we also have an item that does need to be dropped in. It was a minor um, uh, that... Normally, this probably doesn't see, but it does have a variance, so, so we're going to need to drop that in on this, um, and that's for compassionate hands. That's at the end of new business? Yeah, we can do it then. Okay, good. Cool. We'll just drop it in there. Okay, just a couple of comments, uh, picking up on what Paul said. Early voting start today. Please go vote. Please. We, everybody needs to. Took about 10 minutes this morning, so talking about a big use of your time. Secondly, we probably have some uh, controversial subjects today. We generally do. Let me remind you, our obligation is to the city of Lebanon. Neighbors get upset. Neighbors get upset. Builders get upset. Builders get upset. Our obligation is to the city of Lebanon. We are to listen to neighbors and we're to be totally neutral to developers not doing anything to hold them back, but not doing anything to help them get their projects built. So thanks for listening. I think you already knew that, but it made me feel better to say it. <laughs> All right, old business. Okay, old business item number one is a request by Al Alatex Joint Venture for final plat approval for Western Plaza Shopping Center, a three lot subdivision on about 4.54 acres. At 1425, 1427, 1429, 1431, and 1434, 1443, West Main Street. Zone CG and Ward 5, we have no comments as a staff. Consent. Anybody okay with that? Good. <clears throat> okay, old business item number two, request by Arco Murray for site plan approval for Paris. Cold storage, non-residential development on about 15.09 acres at 1400 Southeast Caterpillar Road, zoned light industrial in Ward 3. This project has gained planning commission approval in December of 2021 with sidewalks. They are coming forward today with the request for payment in lieu of sidewalks. The total payment in lieu of sidewalk fee is $59,960. Okay, so that begs the question. <laughs> when we take action, we make a decision, then under what grounds can the developer question that and come back and ask to do it again? We went back to the minutes on this one, and what they said at the meeting was that they would like to handle, um, handle the sidewalk question at the site plan. Um, <clears throat> 
site plan level and they weren't sure if they wanted to do sidewalks or not planning commission uh wasn't terribly clear on it on the the call but it was um what we we went back to the tape and it did appear to us that it was for sidewalks and, and that's the way the motion was made that's my first, so that's technically what it was um just because of a little bit of ambiguity on what they wanted to do and, and maybe some clarification on our side we thought it was appropriate to bring that back so the only issue there is sidewalks that's it okay Business item number three, request by Jeff Hall for plant services approval for about 23.73 acres of the Ridge Estate project at an unaddressed property on Darlene's Way, zoning to SP to be added to Ward 4. Uh, this is a recommendation to City Council. <coughs> expected City Council reading for this ordinance are as follows. The first reading and public hearing are December 6th, and the second reading is December 20th. Give us, we've, yeah, we've done this before. Give us the history on this. Yeah, so, so this is this has been before. Uh, There's a, a lot of uh, comment about it um, when we had it come through before. Uh, a lot of concern about um, connecting to Darlene's Way, connecting to Stonebridge, um, and and we've talked offline this, um, that you wanted to get a clear understanding of what our position is. Um, Our yeah, meaning the city the staff. staff. The staff yes. position, yeah. Uh, it is in the future land use plan uh, as um, it mixed housing. So there was a little bit of anticipation that they were going to ask. They've actually been talking to us for many years. But um, really, we're looking for a benefit to the city. And from a city staff standpoint, <coughs> connecting the street is an important thing. If you're not going to do that, then... I'm not sure why we we proceed. Okay, so picking up on that, gonna, for the best interest of the city, connectivity is a big deal. <laughs> we can't, we shouldn't isolate developments. Second thing is, and we've had many discussions about that, annexation is a big deal. Do we want to add to the geography of the city of Lebanon? So it seems to me this is kind of boiling down to an annexation question. Sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And does the city have a position as to whether or not we want to add geography to the city of Lebanon? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've said many times that we've got a large city limits for the population. Um, it's it's getting a little bit better, but it's you know it's not um, it's not in line with where it should be. We've got a lot of open spaces, basically. What I mean. And by open space, I mean space that's not used, not, you know, dedicated open space. Um, so development in the city, you know, is what we prefer. Um, once it comes to the city, then we, we will treat it that way. But with annexations, there is a lot of uh, leeway from the city, from the planning commission, from the city council on whether to approve or deny um, an annexation. This is a, a, a <coughs> property that is a city on both sides, or almost both sides, with the, with the 109 and all that is city west of this. Mm -hmm. So basically what they're doing is filling in the gap that's there. But that in and of itself does not establish that it should be done. No, it's not, but I'm saying it's just filling in the gap. I understand. Decide whether it's something we want to do or not. That is correct. Okay. Other questions, thoughts? <clears throat> All right. I like the connectivity really that it has to the south and to the west. Um, it's just going to make things flow better through that area if there's an accident on uh, legal pike. There's a reason that we're not elected. <laughs> we can, we can do that. except for one. <laughs> we absolutely have a license to do the unpopular things. So except for one. <clears throat> That's running for re-election. So. Unopposed. <laughs> Congratulations. I, I, uh, I, based on all of the input I've received up to this point, um, I do not see myself being in favor of this. Okay. That's my opinion. All right. Questions, comments? All right. We'll leave uh, three and four on the Excuse agenda. Excuse me. Can I ask a question? Uh, oh. Yes. You need to come to the podium. Can we do allow one speaker per item 
I didn't ask in the first two. That's my bad, but please. Uh, I was just wondering whether or not the developers submitted a different plan than uh, what they originally proposed at the meeting to the uh, neighbors uh, of those two subdivisions. Did it change? Yeah, this is this is the plan that they're showing right now. It's different from what the original plan was. It does not connect to Darling's Way, but it does have four parcels. Um, that touch up Darlene's Way, the rest of the subdivision doesn't have access to Darlene's Way. The only access would be through Stonebridge. Um, there are three other stops, but that's the same as it was before. So the developer has changed it to where he does, where the only access is through Stonebridge? That's what he's asking. For. Okay. okay. That will be vehemently opposed. I mean, obviously, in that by the residents. We understand. Okay. Thanks. All right. Let's go ahead. Okay. So we're good for old business items on the four of them? Yes. Okay. They're both on the agenda. All right. All right. New business item number one. Request the Huffaker Group for preliminary plat approval for preliminary plat of the DZ Investments LLC property at four lot subdivision on about 0.96 acres at 708 Hartsville Pike, zoned R2 and Ward 2. Um, we just requested them to make the note that sidewalks came in lieu of sidewalk construction should be required for all new construction. Uh, they need to provide utility availability letters and show the sewer extension to lots two and three. Those sound like pretty generic things. I mean, sidewalks are going to be there, mm -hmm. and they've got to have utility uh, connections, mm -hmm. and they don't have those things. <clears throat> Not to the two lots that I mentioned. They okay. just need to show how they're going to. Um, I don't think that it's ready to be on. I uh, agree. I mean, if they don't have that, then uh, why should we be talking about it? Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think that's that's appropriate. The preliminary plan is to show how utilities are supposed to get to properties. Um, there was, we, we had that question um, at, the, at the time. Um, we didn't see any comments on utilities, so okay. um, we weren't sure where it went, but I, I do think they're asking for utilities to be extended to those and they're not there yet okay all right item number one is off the agenda <coughs> new business item number two request by john cody for final <coughs> plan approval for a subdivision of cody bramlett llc property a three lot subdivision on about 1.03 acres at 102 newby street 308 and 314 south cumberland street zone commercial neighborhood in ward three they need to show a sewer service line going to lot three. A 20-foot rear setback is needed on lot two. A variance has been requested to allow for a 10-foot setback there. A 20-foot rear setback is also needed on lot three. A variance has been requested to allow for a zero-foot setback. Uh, further comment that has come up after this report was written. Um, the city is requesting a five-foot dedication of right away along Newby Street to accommodate the sidewalk. Um, as well as at the corner to allow for a pedestrian passage there. But the applicant is not aware of that yet. Okay, so the second two items are requests for variances, which we deal with. Uh, the first item is back to the sewer. Yeah, so this one's a little bit different than item one in that we know that there's sewer there because they have a bathroom in that, on that parcel. So we're just asking them to show it and not the... Item one, they, they're not actually connecting. This one's clearly connected. We just need them to show it. So you would consider it to be different? Yeah. Okay. Questions, comments? Are the setbacks a problem? Like, should is that a legit variance? Yeah, the, well, she's coming up. The yes. setbacks, we, we knew these were going to be here. The build, it's, it's because of a building. There's a building. Okay. The property line is going to go right through an existing building. This property has been zoned industrial, which puts 40 foot setbacks. We kind of went to CN to reduce the number of variances they would, but the um, existing structures, the shape of the lots, um, 
the, the nature of the floodplain, the nature of this property kind of lends itself to, we got them as close as we can, and then they just need some small variances that are really not fixable by the property owner. Okay. Because it goes to Please. Hello. Your name and address. Uh, Robin Hamill, Atlantic Surveying. Want my address? For record? Oh, 1733 Belotes Ferry Road, Lebanon. Good. Um, I could not hear um, what you were saying about the sewer. Sure. We just need to shut. There's that one uh, lot, lot three. Three. Mm -hmm. We just need to see where the sewer is located. Well, that can't. Are you you're the one that's along the creek? Yeah. That can't be found. Uh, well, Seriously, so <laughs> the, the city's been out there and everything, and the only way that you're going to find out where that's going, we think it's along the creek and then it crosses and goes to the sewer yeah. across the creek, but um, without digging up the sewer, it's just been there so long we have no idea. No one can find <clears throat> how it actually where it goes after it leaves the building. It seems inappropriate for us to be dealing with the project when we can't locate the sewer. Agreed. Okay. Um, it, what I would say is that you should probably work with the sewer department and see if, if they can, um, if they're okay with the sewer not being shown. Um, okay. But that would be the remedy. Okay. So it's not ready for this week. No. no. All right. That one, number two is off. I'll make a point on that. Uh, John has been through this on this thing. The building is what it is. The sewer is what it is. Uh, if they can show from the city uh, by next week. No, we don't want to do by next week. It's either by this meeting or next month. We need to be consistent with what we did with the past. Yep. Is there one more case? Or? Well. Okay. Thank you. Number three. New business item number three request by Nyer for final plot approval for lots one through three. Alley goes south, a three lot subdivision on about 39.39 acres at 210 and unaddressed property on Alley Good Way, 1960 Southeast Cater Peel Road from uh, Zone Commercial General and Plan Business Industrial Park in Ward 3. They made a note that the sidewalks will be handled on the site plans for each of the parcels, and there are no open comments from staff. Consent. Any comments? Consent. No question. Yes, sir. With that comment relative to sidewalks being handled by site plan, does that mean it could come back like the other one did and a payment in lieu be yeah. offered? Um, what we're trying to avoid there is with commercial property when they get subdivided like this there's a really good chance that something's going to be developed on there um, and if you put the sidewalks in first we're just going to tear them up when the site plan comes so in this situation um, we anticipate that they're subdividing it to develop it and that it's going to be more appropriate to handle the sidewalks with the site plan when they have some idea where they're going to go I didn't know. <clears throat> Other questions? Okay, number four. New business item number four request by Clayton Properties Group, Inc., for final plat approval for phase 34 Valley Brook and Creekside at Stonebridge, a 19 lot subdivision on about 9.7 acres and unaddressed properties on Leeville Pike. Zoned RS12 with Stonebridge PUD overlay in Ward 4. Uh, staff does have, doesn't have any comments. Consent. Comments? Questions? Consent. Your business item number five, request by Beezer Homes for site plan approval for Waverly Mail Kiosks, Site 1, a non-residential development on about 0.42 acres at 124 Willow Bend Drive. Zone to RS9 and RD9, Ward 4. There's a minor note correction that's needed on the cover sheet. Um, bike parking is required to be illuminated at night. Uh, the applicant has stated they're not providing any site lighting, so and no variance has been requested, so we don't really know how that's being achieved. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. If it's required and they're just saying they're not going to do it and they're not asking for a variance, uh, it sounds to me like they're not in compliance with the zoning. Sounds like it'd be turned down to me. Yeah. I, I, I'm not familiar with that comment. Um, you're hitting me cold. Um, I'm, I'm sure my staff is. But I do have a question. This is a mail kiosk. The intent is for people to come park, get their mail, and leave, not to be parking long term. Are you saying there's a code requirement for bicycle parking at the mail kiosk and it has to be lit? Yeah, so if you're providing parking, or there's a required amount of bike parking that's required, and part of the bike parking code requires it to be illuminated for night. Okay, thanks. Uh, all right. If we leave it on, it sounds like a pretty much an automatic turndown uh, since they're not in compliance and they haven't asked for a variance. Okay. It's not on. Off. Oh. So it's on, correct? It's on. Is it on the agenda or off the agenda? Well, it becomes a question. Uh, let's see. What do we think? All right. Leave it on. We'll deal with it. Do business item number six request by Beezer Homes for site plan approval for Waverly Mail Kiosk Site 2, a non residential development on about 0.23 acres on 50 Willow Bend Drives and RD9 Ward 4. The incorrect cover sheet was included in the submittal. It included the one for Site 1. Minor no corrections are needed, and the right cover sheet needs to be resubmitted on the bike parking. Uh, is it required to be illuminated at, at night? Uh, no lighting has been provided or proposed, and no variance has been requested. Sounds like a duplicate of the last one. Yep. Okay, it's on. New business item number seven, request by Love's Way Church for minor site plan approval for Love's Way Church, 40 by 60 pole barn and non-residential development on about 21 acres at 1315 Murfreesboro Road, some commercial service, and Ward 3, a wooden 37 by 52 and a half barn stood on the site till about a few months ago, 75% uh, of the primary materials and 50% of the secondary facade materials need to consist of brick, stone, cast stone, or stucco. Applicant has requested a variance to use 100% metal on all facades because the proposed building is over 600 feet away from Murfreesboro Road. Anybody want to speak to this? Johan McGregor, pastor of this property. Okay. Do you have comments about the project? No, sir. I've laid them out, and um, it's just replacing the old barn that was there. The old one was kind of falling apart. We just needed to make something nice. Okay. Thank you. So there were being uh, requested, uh, a variance has been requested to completely change the materials. All right. It's on. Thank you. <clears throat> Business item number eight, request by Lebanon Development Company for site plan approval for 6960 Eastgate Boulevard, a non-residential development on about 9.96 acres at 6960 Eastgate Boulevard, then plan business industrial park and ward four. The side and front loaded truck delivery stalls need to be screened from the roadway with a minimum six foot high masonry or wooden wall or fence and a six foot deep planting. A variance has been requested to allow no wall or fence to be included in just the um, six foot deep planting to screen the truck loading area. Uh, facades facing the right of way need at least 20% transparency. The variance has been requested to allow for 12% transparency. Anybody want to speak to this one? Okay. Questions, comments? I don't have any problem with the transparency <clears throat> because I think it's going to be kind of a warehouse type deal. Um, so I don't have any issue with that whatsoever, but I would like to <clears throat> know that the truck bays are going to be screened properly. Mm -hmm. I agree. Me too. Okay. On the agenda. Okay, move the 
business item number nine, request by GT Towing for a future land use plan amendment for about 1.09 acres of the GT Towing 400 East High Street project at 400 East High Street from suburban commercial to light industrial. Properties to the north are indicated as residential 16 units per acre, to the east as public institutional residential, to the south as public institutional residential and mixed housing, and west as mixed housing and suburban commercial on the future land use plan. This is a recommendation in the city council. And just a little background on this. Uh, this GT towing went in there um, several years ago was we communicated that they needed to be a car dealer or a car repair. Um, and then if you're doing car repair, towing is a acceptable accessory use to a car repair. It's common to have a place to tow cars to fix them up and, and that's normal. What's not allowed in a commercial zoning district is just a tow yard for just a tow truck. Um, it's come to our attention that there is no repair operation there at all. It's just a tow yard. Um, so this is the result. This application is the result of a code enforcement um, issue. They've been there for how long? Uh, I mean, it used to be a nursery. I mean, so it would be, so were you? I would yeah. say maybe four. I, I can find out for sure, but I, if I'm not sure. Is it six? I want to speak to this. We've been around for two years. We've been at the location for six years, and when we had it rezoned or when we zoned it, I, I, think, I guess I misunderstood about a repair. We don't do repair. We are central for Lebanon Police Department and Wilson County Police Department's TH phase. Uh, accidents happen. We have to place a storm at the time that that happens, and, and that's what we do. And we like to stay there and get this rezoned where we can continue on doing business there. Okay, thank you. Other questions, comments? So with this right here, so that's moving it to the light industrial is what we would move it to? or That's what the request is. Okay. I don't have an issue with that. Anything else? Not in that area, I don't. <clears throat> Since it's been there for six years. and How did it just come to, to be determined from codes that they were in violation? Well, there was, there was some issues with screening and that type of thing. So there are complaints from... Yeah, residents for other other things but in the process of investigating or looking into those items it became clear there was no repair um, going on at the location and then if there's no repair then it becomes a zoning issue is there proper screening um there is they've been working on it. i haven't looked at it recently but so it'd be hard for me to tell right now but um, they did have a mesh it is actually an issue that we're dealing with right now we're, we're looking at all the uh, all the tow yards in the in the community but um, what's typically been going up is the mesh screening and the code says opaque um, if, if it's done most of the time you can see through mesh screen there right. may be ways to do it that you you can't so opaque would mean you can't see through it um, they did have a wood fence up at for a time um, and i don't remember how that's working but it was the the main complaints um, just recently have been outside the screened area outside the fenced area in, in the front parking area um, so that's what initiated the, the uh, codes complaints this time and that area i don't believe is screened so if city council rezones this then it's up to enforcement to make sure that the screening is in compliance sure yeah and that's that's important to know if if this gets rezoned <laughs> the code enforcement issues as far as screening still apply mm -hmm. if it doesn't it doesn't really matter how much they screen it if it's not allowed use it's just not allowed use so okay. that's that's what we're looking at the use so, so we really don't have to the, get into to screening right they now. would have to move right so we're just going to go rezone or recommending reason. Thoughts, questions? All right. I think they're just trying to get in compliance uh, yeah. from where yeah, that they were. So I don't have any issue with it whatsoever. <clears throat> Sounds like that is nine and ten. Yeah. All right. Good. Eleven.
Move is this item number 11, request by Lifestyle Communities for a future land use plan amendment for about 45.99 acres of the LC Lebanon project at 1850 and 1918 Franklin Road from residential 16 units an acre to medical commercial medical office in the South Hartman Overlay in Ward 3. Property to the north are indicated as rural open space and interchange commercial to the east as interchange commercial to the south as office medical. Suburban commercial and interchange commercial, and West has a role open space on the future land use plan. This is a recommendation to City Council. Anybody want to speak to this? He come bearing gifts. I did. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good morning, Joe Haddock, CSDG. Uh, sorry, I didn't. We ran out of time to bring y'all hard copies of this, but thought y'all may want to see a concept layout. So uh, this is Lifestyle Communities. Don't know. Uh, they've been very active in the Middle Tennessee area for several years. They have a, a large project in Mount Juliet. Um, if you're familiar with them, you know that their projects uh, oftentimes carry a commercial component that they also own and operate that is open to the public, uh, specifically their goat restaurant. Um, so they're very excited to be in this community uh it just so happens with the land use and then the rezoning you'll hear wouldn't support their commercial uses on site uh, so that is the basis for our request today uh, the density proposed in the zoning is is consistent with what i believe y'all rezoned last year to the rm6 so uh, we're still following the max density um, but again here's a concept layout commercial along uh, the Franklin Road corridor and then back into their standard product, a mix of uh, townhomes and apartment units. Okay. Can I answer any additional questions y'all may have? Thank you. One thing that Joe didn't mention is there, does, there is a piece of industrial land that was left over. I think the previous um, developers who thought about doing this were wanting to put any storage in that and so his request is to move it all industrial and just uh and the commercial sounds good anything else all right this that also takes care of 11 and 12. 13. This is item number 13, request by Zachary Thompson for plan of services approval for about 7.37 acres at 110 Surrey Place project at 110 Surrey Place, 6305 and 6341 Label Pike, and zoning to rural residential to be added to Ward 4. Plan of services have been included in your packet after the staff report was written. Uh, this is a recommendation to City Council. Okay, anybody want to speak to this? All right. Educate us. Yeah, this is this is an annexation. Um, we're we're doing this. Um, there's a segment of the code, the state code, which I I wasn't aware of until this, uh, we were pushed on this a little bit, um, where you can annex somebody into the city who does not want to come in, if two thirds of the pro property owners want to come in, if those two thirds. Uh, that want to come in are the majority of the land and um but that expires um january 1st uh, 2023 so this is the, this. the situation here um the property to the north the long property is asking for it there's a little bit of land on the graves property that we left so that we didn't have a donut hole of uh, when we annexed that property just a few months ago. And then the property owner on Leeville um, has, has, um, was not um, willing to come in um, with, with the other one. Um, so anyway, this is a unique situation in that, you know, there's, there's a little bit of time, um, you know, you can vote it up or down, um, but any deferrals would, would mean that this would probably run out of its um, legality. So the city is wants this. Yeah, and so yeah, this particular case, 
it does solve a problem as far as you know just leaving a, a piece of land right on Leeville, close to the interstate, close to the fire station, close to a lot of our, um, our services out in the county, and we're not thrilled about that. There's also the ability to get um, Surrey, so basically Stonehenge Drive going towards the west, um, Surrey. Um, the Next to Hickory Ridge Road is where the Publix is, so having another way to get into the Publix for some of the, the uh, <coughs> residential communities, especially Holland Ridge at that location. So there's a reason why the city would want this to come in. It really, I mean, if you look at it, it kind of doesn't make sense why it would be in the county um, uh, for this particular situation. It is a unique uh, situation, um, certainly, uh, I don't know that the property owner is truly opposed, but he's he will, you know, the annexation. So, um, yeah, you know, we'll just have to fill that out. But um, the, that's, comp that's the composition of the land there, how many properties are we going to bring in with this? So it's it's three. And, and this provision I mean, it caps it at eight. You can't do more than eight. There's only three properties. So okay. two of them are willing to come in. One is just the remainder of what was already annexed. And, the other one wants to come in. Um, so it's only a total of three. Okay. And you have to have two thirds. So two of them are willing to come in, and one of them is, is reluctant. Okay. Mr. Deputy, give uh, access to people from there. We're going to go around Hickory and come back in that property. Yeah. Maybe from Hart's legal pipe. Well, that, that brings up the other item, which is the supper. To do this, um, We've asked them to just come in RR. What that does is it allows them to move forward without having to really worry about what their zoning is going to be. RR is three acre zoning. So we would anticipate that they would come back at some other time and handle a more specific zoning for what they want to do. Thoughts? Questions? Sounds good. All right. So that's 13 and 14. Item number 15, a request by staff to amend subdivision regulations to add language reflecting changes in state law regarding dedication of real property in Article 1, purpose, authority, and jurisdiction. Section C, jurisdiction. There is a typo in your <coughs> staff report. It does not need to go to city council. Yeah, this is an explanation um, of, of why we're doing it. Sure. This is um, a new state law that came through uh, July 1st. Um, really, and, and Andy can speak to this a little bit, but really the, um, the what we've been hearing from developers is um, there's a statement that says cities cannot ask for additional right-of-way when something is done. And he goes on to say, unless there is a legitimate need, uh, essentially this is really just looking at the um, Nolan and Dolan cases, which are um, Supreme Court cases that deal with planning, uh, what cities can do, what they can't do as far as um, taking land or, or requiring um, land. Um, we think that we're following it anyway. Um, but this is just a statement saying that we're going to comply with what the Supreme Court said um, and what the, the city, the state legislature has asked uh, cities to do. The Nolan and Dolan cases basically set forth a couple of different tests you have to look at to see if the city requiring a dedication of property is constitutional or not. The legislature just took those two cases and codified them into a statute. So they just basically codified the Dolan and Dolan tests. And did what. so it's not saying we can't require it. It's just saying if we do, it has to meet certain criteria. Yeah. And then there was a recommendation from the Tennessee uh, Planning Association that cities just adopt um, some standard language, which is what's being asked for here, into our code to reflect that state decision. Since this seems to be just to get us in compliance with state law, can this be consent? Um, it probably needs to have um, 
there's going to be a public hearing. Oh, um, okay. So All right. that's a different deal. Yeah. All right. Good. <clears throat> then, then we had a drop in. So that would be on the supplemental. Um, uh, this is a request by Compassionate Hands for site plan approval for Compassionate Hands storage shed condition, a non-residential development on about 0.49 acres at 214 North College Street, zone commercial service and more three. This is a minor site plan and it was being staff reviewed. However, the applicant is requesting a building material variance for their newly proposed storage shed. And what is the variance? Um, it's for the materials because it's a pre-built structure and it's just going to be delivered there. So um, it doesn't fit our building material standard. Yes, district. And it's a composite, wood composite material that's um, it's going to be built with. Do we have any history of approving this kind of thing? Well, there's really there's two on the agenda today. Uh, for this, this month um, of looking at these types of things. Normally we see these types of structures in the residential areas, so we don't see them uh, in a commercial. Um, I know that we, you know, we do have the garage that went up on um, Winwood. 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 So mm -hmm. um, sometimes the BZA looks at Similar things in the residential areas. Um, so there's a little bit of precedent. I mean, it just happened to be two this month. Um, so have we not established a precedent in the past that would apply here? With Winwood, I believe um, we made them comply with almost everything. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Trying to think if there was any variance at all, but there, well, actually, wasn't it the owner that decided to comply with the city? Mm -hmm. I think that yeah. one because, that was, because it, when it came to the the regular meeting, it that already got everything smoothed off to where it could have been consent. Exactly. Right. So they did that on their own. Well, I wouldn't say that. that well, was <laughs> <laughs> their hand was forced with right? some coercion, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but it seems to me the message is if we pass this, it would be setting a precedent inconsistent with what we've done in the past. Yeah, and technically, variances don't set precedent. You have to take each one, at, you know, on individually. Your own. So I don't know that it really would set a precedent, but it would definitely set a tone. An inconsistency, sure. let's say that. Okay. All right. They're asking for a variance, so I guess we will deal with it. Okay. Discussion items? Is that where we are? Yeah. Where is that located again? I don't know. It's uh, down across from the jail. College Street. College Street. Yeah. College Street. Yeah. College Street. yeah. Is it visible it's where the, the day, street? where the daycare used to be. Yeah, it's right across from where Tucker's Sausage used to be. It's an outbuilding with the, the old brick building in the front. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing is kind of like it's not consistent with its own parent yeah. building, so to speak. That's a bit of a yeah. challenge. Okay. Appreciate the work they're doing. Most definitely. Other questions, comments on this one? All right, let's move on. Um, as, as we're moving to discussion, I just wanted to throw a couple of things in here. Um, we did have an application from the cubes um, last minute. They added something that they had asked a variance for and it needed a variance. And so they were not uh, put on this agenda. And then the other thing is we do have a, a new assistant uh, uh, attorney uh, here. I just want to introduce him, Steve Chambers. Um, he's sitting behind you. Uh, so welcome to, to Lebanon. Um, and so the discussion items, the, the residential committee um, has come up with um, some things to uh, to add, and she can work on an ordinance. I just want to make sure everybody's um, aware of these. Um, whether we want to do it this month or next month uh, is, is up to this body, but 
material standards for single family homes, two family homes, uh, we have a traditionally regulated material standards. If we do regulate material standards, they're not going to come to this board to be reviewed. They would just be reviewed at staff, and that's that's something that, that is required. It can't be brought to a board. So, uh, but the standard, the, the the items that were being considered um, for uh, when we regulate single family homes are material standards. Um, primary facade, basically masonry, um, the masonry standards all the way around. So bricks, stone, um, possibly stucco. Um, secondary facade um, would be the same as primary, which is 75% of that. And then 25% um, can be uh, on excess material or, you know, wood. Um, uh, <coughs> The rear would also be 75% masonry, then 25% of the material that you want. Um, um, the orientation would be towards the street, so it would require all buildings to be facing a public or private street. Landscaping, um, the, the idea here would be to um, um, put a four foot uh, foundation planning and to you know basically we want to have the buildings present um well and then um it's, we're missing it here but also a street a shade tree in the front um, yard and or an ornamental tree in the front yard and another one in the backyard um, so some sort of tree shade tree or ornamental tree um, for the landscaping uh, parking and garage the issue that we've been dealing with is there's some subdivisions that have essentially a 20-foot driveway, maybe 25-foot driveway, and that's fine with one car, but once you try to put another car in that driveway and you have a sidewalk in the front, you're hanging over the sidewalk. So there's several things that that can be done to, um, to um, address that. You know, you can... You can require that one side of the building is above the parking. Uh, there's a lot of developments that have this issue that have five foot setbacks on both sides of the building. So if you require at least one side to have room for a car to park beside it, um, we could require the garages to be um, 30 to 35 feet behind the sidewalk. Um, we could require all garages <coughs> to be on the side of the building or the rear allow parking on the street, um, but it design parking. So not just parking randomly on the street, but when you do your development, you actually plan for the parking on the streets. And that would require that you um, think about mail pickup because the mailman wants all the mailboxes to be at the street or in a mail kiosk, I guess now. And uh, it, you know, you, you have to accommodate trash pickup. So a place where trash to come uh, with their, their truck to come and pick up the trash and then or you could require a rear loading so the idea there was that we would let the developer let the applicant choose how they wanted to address it but they had to address it in, in, in some way so that that we knew that there was a way for parking to happen on the, the properties without getting into the sidewalk because that's that's the main thing so do you give them a list of acceptable options yep yeah and then they have to they have to choose which one they want to do. So, I have to choose what I want. I just, sure. maybe just didn't hear it. Is uh, an acceptable uh, um, optional final dollar, or does that take my little off, off the table? On the materials? On the materials. On the rear in the back, you would have 25% that could be vinyl. 25%. Only, only 25 so you're not going to get the whole, right. whole thing. Right. The second, does this apply to an individual who has a single lot? Yes, in a, in a subdivision. Yeah, or is this just to developers? No. So this, what this would apply to is anybody who builds a, a single-family home. So whether it's a development or a single lot. But what we don't want to get into is once it's sold, once it's built and up, and then the new person comes. <clears throat> um, we want to set them up so that they're using some good standards. 
but the idea is that we're not going to police them after that. So if they come in and cut down their tree, if they come in and, and you know, Bill Clinton's elected, feel good about that. Do, do, yeah, do something else. We're going, you know, they can, it's, it's their property. They can, they can adjust it. But when you come into a new subdivision, there's going to be some landscaping in place and they actually have to go out of their way to uh, take it down. Um, I'm just curious if, it's Paul, if uh, an individual homeowner or, Paul, or, or, or it can be a ownership property. changes hands. Mm -hmm. We won't be involved in that. Okay. We so, we're not, so, it's just the new build. Yes, just, just new build. And we only. just want the new build to look halfway decent and then property owners can, we're not trying to get into Good. To David's point about vinyl siding, I know we cannot prohibit vinyl siding, mm -hmm. but are we stuck in 25% or can we go lower than that? Well, the, you know, the whole idea is that you don't prohibit moving on the field. Um, so, I understand. So, you know, what that number is, you know, <clears throat> works, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure that there's precedent. Like, I don't, it, you know, I know you can't prohibit it 25%. I mean, you could go 10. You could just say trims. I, I'm not sure what all you can do. Um, but. Uh, putting it in the back for 25 percent. Um, Try to get that narrowed down, like to be the trim or uh, a 10 or 15 percent versus 25 percent. So I think that's something that we could act on next next week when we talk about this. And if we choose to amend this and yeah. reduce it from 25, then yeah, I'm hearing that we could do that. So we could probably say that it's a maximum 10 percent vinyl. It can be yeah. the other 15 percent to match one of the. <clears throat> others is that what we're saying uh, i mean i'm not sure what we're saying in the <laughs> sense that i don't know what the precedents are like i don't know where i don't know that there's a and can do you that? have any idea if there's i mean it I, I think it's kind of an awkward situation because it's there's a lot of people who would say we can't even do it at all um so you can't do what it um, regulates it regulate oh just regulate it all so what the limits are and how you do that would be even harder for me to. So, Paul, uh, you didn't just come up with this out of thin air. What is there a city or another ordinance that you have to pattern this after? So, let me be clear. This is the re these are coming out of the residential committees. Committee. Yeah, the but if, but if we're going to write if we're going to write this into the code and, yeah. and, and codify it usually there is a precedence or there is a, yeah. it could be from Franklin or it could be yeah. from Murfreesboro or, <coughs> or somewhere in the state code. Yeah. Mount Julie what requires 100% brick, four sides. Okay. Yeah. What, and to, to that. And would you pattern this after that? Right. To, to kind of get at that, I did have um, uh, Keith Covington, who's our design consultant um, for other things. He's written a memo about um, um, these things looks like we've duplicated one of the pages, but um, so the next page is a memo for him just kind of commenting on, on the, the different pieces of this. Mm -hmm. um, so we do have, you know, he works around the country, he works around uh, Tennessee, um, he's from Franklin, he, he knows Franklin's rules, um, so he does comment on those. Um, so let me, you know, I've gone through four, let me just real quick. Five is variation. Basically, we want to have, you know, limited number. you don't want a, a whole row of the exact same house, you know, so we need to see variation. Entrances, that's just porches being six feet deep and, and um, stoops. Here we have three feet. I think Keith actually says four feet would be nice. Um, then outbuildings, um, regulating them if they're over 200 square feet. Not, not really worrying too much about them if they're smaller than that. Usually those smaller ones come in after the, the first build anyway, so mm -hmm. we probably won't be seeing them. Um, so anyway, I just rushed through that last part. Anyway, Keith gets into, you, you can read Keith's thing. But the one thing I wanted to mention is if we're going to do this, um, I do think there has to be a broader public comment. I, I think we should have a public <coughs> open house to kind of show what we're what the ideas are on this um, which is a little bit which is why i hesitated to put them directly on the agendas because i think we do need to have some public input some some outreach just because it's such a broad 
it, it touches so much of the city. So what are you suggesting as a path forward process? I think, you know, in, in, if we want to set a date and just have an open house and just invite, you know, um, you know, the public to come to see what the thought process is. Um, <coughs> I do anticipate some people will think it's great. Some people will think it's not so great. So, um, but, but I don't know what everybody's going to think. So it's out there. But when we do something of this broad, um, I think it's appropriate to have just a informational session. I mean, if we're just doing a neighborhood, then it's not that big a deal. But single-family homes touch a, a huge, huge part of the city. You can't imagine the downside to having an open house and talking about it. Sure. Yeah. Is there? Yeah. And I think part of the thing that, that's going to come out, if we don't do that, and we say we're going to regulate single family home. I think everybody that already owns a house and it's already built is going to be like mm -hmm. pulling their hair out, like, right. what are we doing? And so that open house will let us say, we're not actually, we're not, if you already have a house, we're not doing that. Mm -hmm. we're, it's just a new house. So, anybody object to an open house? So, no. Okay, now we did not run to ground where we're going to go with the vinyl siding. No. I mean, it's 25% sure. subject to change. Yeah. We can't amend that at our meeting, right? Hey, hey Paul, so <clears throat> the material that you said we can't exclude anything, right? As far as material is. We, we can't exclude anything that's allowed in the. It's already currently IBC allowed. In the, in the international building. Is that just a city of Lebanon thing? No, that's state. That's a, so part of this. Then uh, has there been any constitution? Has there been any uh, challenge to that for the Mount Julius? Well, I was going to say, Mount Julius requiring brick everywhere. How does that work? So uh, part of this comes from not this July, but the July before the state um, specifically said that language. So it was. it's only been in place for like oh. two years. Um, when we do this, we will actually have to separate out and have a separate ordinance for that, which is also required by the state. And we have to have this, a statement saying, you know, there's, there's going to be... Um, anybody who's involved in the brick lobby come talk to me every once in a while. And, and the, you know, I'm sure the vinyl people will come out. It, you know, alerts them that there's a change. Uh, that's set out in that thing. So some of this clarification of what you can do and what is a very new. So whether or not people are stealing that way or not, you know. Uh, <coughs> the standard, the standard, yeah. I think we need to recognize the work that that committee has done. Sure, yeah. Tremendous amount of work. Met many times, really got into detail. Mm -hmm. So and we could have done it without Josh. He worked really hard on it. So come prepared to talk about vinyl siding next week. <laughs> favorite thing. <laughs> Go ahead. If you if you would like, I mean, we could put out some dates and maybe have a night. You want to vote on that next next week vote as far as date. a date for an open house? Okay. You come with some suggestions. I'm not. I, I don't. Object to a setting a date. Yeah, of course not. What the time of year we're getting into? Is I think if we're going to do it, it probably should be before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, mm -hmm. or yeah. we wait till January. Can we get it done in time to have the, the open house or whatever uh, before Thanksgiving? Probably January. 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 If we want to do January, January is a kind of a nice time. The media is always looking for stories. Stone 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 but if we want to do January, that would be a lot easier. We could try to rush it in. But um, okay, so what January solves a lot of problems. action do we need to take with regard to the procedure in before we have the open house? I don't know that we need to do anything before then. Um, I would, because what I'm concerned, like I said, what I'm concerned about is some, it, you know, it's going to be public notice that we're going to be regular. And I just think we have to have. Okay. That so we don't have to do it that way. So then we will take hard. input from that meeting yeah. as a consideration when we make our final recommendation. Yeah. 
Yeah. And then, of course, this will go to city council and, and through that whole process. But, okay. Um, I, just because it's so broad and it's so easy, it's going to be so easy to misunderstand what's going on. I think we have to do that. But we don't, I think we have to, but it's not legally required that we have to. I just think it's a really good idea. Okay. Well, we'd have to have it the first week of December, uh, no later than that, or into January. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can look about that next week. And if, if everybody's okay with I'll just pick, give some suggestions on dates in January and, and uh, see what works. Okay. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else on that? I, I have a little handout that I'm giving you. Looks like this. This is not something that's going to be on the agenda next week, but it's something I just want you to know. Um, the mayor has instructed us to uh, look at updating the South Harmon overlay. Um, we've been doing this for a little while, um, and there's a lot of things that are really that are going really well with that. Um, and then there's some things that are, are not going so well um, that we're learning. You know, we're just learning as we go. Um, but there's a few things that that he's asked us. The primary one, number one on this list, is is to add more commercial. You know, there's there's a, there's uh, we saw with with. Um, the blue hickory, you know, we've been fighting a little bit about trying to get enough commercial on that property, what we expect. Now, there is there is some precedent in other parts of the country, and we're, we're cognizant of this, that there is a lot of residential that needs to go into getting commercial to work. So there is there is that balance. But at this point, um, um, we think that there, there may be, we need to require or allow commercial in more areas. Um, so maybe mixed housing should have a commercial component to it. Uh, you know, we see one project that's coming in right now who's rezoning so that they can get a commercial component into it. And, um, you know, we, we talk about um, apartments, and, and we're going to talk about this next time at the residential community. But one of the things um, that would make it difficult for apartments to come is they're not used to jumping over into the commercial realm. So having some requirement for commercial um, would would be something that I think would be beneficial to everybody, and would would um, have some some uh, you know challenges for a straight uh, apartment complex. Um, <clears throat> increasing the percentages of commercial where required. So we do have some areas that require a percentage of commercial, um, but it's it's one of the areas. It's ten percent. If if you're over ten acres, and you have to have ten percent. And in that 10%, 10% of that has to be commercial, which comes down to about 1%. So maybe more than 1% commercial is would be appropriate. Uh, so he's asked us to look at that. And then medical office, this really gets to the apartment complex thing uh, that I was just talking about. <coughs> medical office does allow commercial, but it doesn't require <coughs> so maybe putting some sort of commercial component in there because the concern is it's, it's part of the... Um, suburban or audio oriented areas. So they don't have as much regulation and uh, apartments are just allowed without, you know, so there's not a whole lot of regulation on it. Um, but we're worried that some, a lot of the office and apartment areas are going, or office and medical areas are going to turn into just apartments. So that's one thing. Um, and then, then while we're doing this, there's some things that we've noticed as staff that need to be uh, thought about um, really defining the percentage more clearly on what commercial is. Um, is it the floor area? Is it the land area? And that's something that's a little bit ambiguous in the code right now. So it's something we've run into. So we just need to define that better. It's, it's um, so that everybody knows. Uh, defining flats better. Right now, it seems like the development community is seeing flats as apartment complexes. And I think there's a difference between what a uh, you know, garden style apartment is and what we see as a flat um, that we'll, we'll have to work on that but what we're envisioning what's been envisioned uh, through the process is not quite what we're, we're getting all the time um, the ability to to front open spaces being used 
way more than we anticipated. I mean, it seems pretty normal to front a street. Um, we were seeing a lot of people who just, or a lot of developments that are just not doing anything to their building except moving the facade over to the to the um, open space. <laughs> and I don't know that that's really what we wanted. So maybe a certain percentage can do that because we're not opposed to it. We have some, some good developments that, that have done it that way. But we were never anticipating that almost every single product is fronting an open space. That that wasn't the intent. But certainly, is if you go by the letter of the law, is is a possibility right now. And then uh, there's a few standards in the suburban and auto oriented areas that that aren't really aren't that much different than the rest of the city. Uh, you know, frontage type is considered in signage, but um, you know, gas stations maybe having more. You know, somebody wanted to come with a gas station. There's not a whole lot there that's different than anywhere else in the city, and I don't know if that's what we're really anticipating for the South Hartman overlay. Um, so um, I think we've been okay so far, but we just can see with conversations we've had with developers, can we do this, can we do that? You know, um, the answers we're able to give don't always seem like they're what were intended in the South Harmon overlay once they dig into it. Um, so there's just a few things here that we think um, after having experience working with developers that we're going to do. Not not this meeting, but I wanted everybody to know kind of where we're going with that. And probably November we're going to work on So it. is somebody going to give us a recommendation or are we start with a blank piece of paper? No, I think I think we're we've been given a directive on the commercial. Um, we've noticed some things. These things, these projects tend not to come to planning commission because there's a provision to allow them to be staff reviewed. So I don't even expect you to have any whole lot of insight because, you know, we've been dealing with these for two years, right? You know, maybe more than that, but yeah, two or three years. But I don't know that, I mean, we're noticing some things that just need to be fixed uh, or changed or, you know, we weren't anticipating it being used this way. Um, so we're going to come with recommendations to you because I think. Okay. But if you have any ideas, any suggestions, anything, perfectly willing to listen to those and consider those. As well. yeah, I think recommendations is a good way to go. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. And then we we scratch number three. Um, I did have a comment yesterday that we might want after the staff report went out that we might want to talk about the Power 10 conference from yesterday a little bit if, if you want. And then I enjoyed the laugh out of it. I didn't take some of our names to it. It's a really good <laughs> meeting. Yeah. I mean, I'd make you a bunch of people over the years. This is by far the best I intended to get back to what we're dealing with on a monthly basis. And just summarize um, uh, just what the format was. There was essentially an interview with the mayor of Carmel, Indiana, uh, that took a little bit of it. And I think that was actually really good. There was somebody from Houston that had to show up. I think he was supposed to give a speech, but it ended up being mostly an interview with the mayor of Carmel, Indiana. Um, they've become well known uh, for for their community and what they've done. Uh, he's been there for 27 years. And then it moved on to a forum with three mayors. Uh, our mayor, Rick Bell, was part of that. Um, and then the mayor from Murfreesboro, who I'm drawing a blank on his name, and then Mayor Page from Gallatin was also in that panel. And somebody from the Tennessean was the interviewer, so somebody who actually knew how to interview. And so I think they pulled that off really well. So that was just the format. Really good ideas. Some things for us to work on, think about. I know the mayor was challenged, uh, and I suspect he's going to be going to Carmel to learn more about that place. Yeah, and and so Carmel, time. Carmel, Indiana is a is Franklin, Tennessee considers Carmel a pure city to them. Um, they when, even in the interview they were talking about some things that were similar to to Franklin and Carmel. Franklin took a whole crew of good people up there for a period. It didn't say how long it was, but uh, they were super impressed. Just to with what they saw. Shock you a little bit. These guys love 
roundabouts, traffic circles. Yeah, we're getting yeah. Sense. Yeah. He's got in the this town is hundred thousand plus, hundred and forty seven traffic circles and twelve traffic lights. Wow! Yeah. And they Not love bad. it. Let's do it. So the, Can we make them so better so than the squirkle? They cut down from uh, from four lanes of traffic down to two lanes of traffic, and they have moved traffic is faster by a long shot. With a lot fewer accidents. With a lot fewer accidents and that sort of thing with a traffic circle. If that's the case, we have some that we desperately need to look into. Because we're done, they're nothing but uh, uh, hold you up. So, Kristen, what do you think of that? They're known for the roundabouts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard they, uh, the mayor's. The first one in the United States. Yeah. 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 Floor traffic was so much better and it cut the accidents down. And I thought, well, the traffic circle with cars coming together like that, that's just a big traffic accidents are bound to happen. But it cut them down, you can dump off from somebody else. I mean, there's much yeah. across planes. Yeah, I think it's emerging all the time. More side swipes than, mm -hmm. than uh, T bones. Good meeting. You done? <laughs> I think so. All right. Yes, yes. I think I was old business number two, but you didn't call for a comment. Can oh, I just, I, make a, pardon. Excuse I just me. wanted to make a clarification. We don't oppose putting the sidewalks in, but we've looked at some other developments that have come through planning commission. They did go the fee in lieu of route. The way our letter read to us, which was a misunderstanding, was we had the option to resolve post planning. So that's why we're back in front of you guys. We would rather give you guys the funds to go place those sidewalks where maybe they're more important to the city. So that's all. I apologize for not calling on you. Thank you. We're done. I like them. I came from the. Red lights out. Yeah, I'm in on that. Yeah, we had a big one. So I has in the inner lane and the outer lane because it's so big that you have to move around so you move into the middle lane. So I had to.